Hey everyone, welcome to today's session of Artco Afternoon Arts. Thank you for joining me. My name is Amber Cummings. I'm the artistic director slash cat herder here. And today is Wednesday. It's Wacky Wednesday. And we're going to be playing around with some buttons today. And we're going to mess around with embroidery a little bit. I know not a ton of people do embroidery, but it's a really fantastic art form that we can utilize a lot of uh, materials around the house and materials that we can grab also from uh, craft stores, etc. So it's a fun, different way to play around with making and creating and kind of pulling a little bit of these 3D elements, slightly 3D because they're still buttons and flat, but still we're going to utilize these in order to create a fun bit of work. Much like one of our local artists, Carol Tanner, she does a lot of embroidery and she plays around with a lot of different ways to make those stitches and put those buttons on fabric. So I've got a bunch of different buttons here. I've got a another bigger bag here and we're not really going to have many rules. I'm going to play with some different colored threads. I'm going to have to get dubs up off the sewing kit so that I can grab all of that and get our needles and such together. But I wanted to make sure that I got you guys familiar with some of the materials before we got started. So I've got a nice thin or a nice thick piece of canvas and so you can see this has a really thick weave in it. This weave right here is going to let us do a lot of nice stitching and I'm going to showcase some basic embroidery things along with cross stitching etc. And then something like an embroidery hoop is something that will help you in order to keep your fabric nice and flat. I have a thin oval one here. You can get these really inexpensively at Walmart or a craft store and I'll show you how these work. You have one that doesn't have any hinge on it and this one has a little tightener so it's got a little knob that you can turn left or right and this allows you to tighten it up etc. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to put this underneath my piece of fabric. I've got a piece of fabric here, this canvas bit. This is left over from some Christmas fabric. You can see it's got some silver or gold thread running through it. And now I've got my piece on the bottom and then I have this other piece on the top. So I'm actually going to push this down and then I'm going to start tightening this up. Just enough to make sure that like they don't come off each other. And then as I tighten this, I'm actually going to pull this fabric tight on all the sides. I'm going to tighten this up some more. And so really what I'm going to want, my goal, is that my fabric is going to be tight almost like a drum in my frame. This is kind of like the beginning of how to get started with our embroidery. We've got to have a nice flat area. This will help us keep our project nice and clean. And you see the tighter I get it pulled. Oops, I did that the wrong way. The more the crease comes out of my fabric. And so I think that's about as tight as I need it to be for my project. Let's look on the back side, make sure I'm doing all right. Okay, great. So we've got a really great thing prepped here. And I just kind of did mine in the center. You know, perhaps I want to turn around and put this in a frame where I'm going to wrap it around. Or maybe I'm going to take this and I could turn around and turn it into something, uh, a usable piece of work like a pillow or something, etc., etc., etc. So I've got a bunch of fun fabrics here. I've got a bunch of embroidery colors. I've got a whole slew of them here. And so we're going to play with those. I'm also going to make sure that I have, uh, here, here's my pin cushion. I've got a nice little pin cushion here that I'm going to actually use. I usually use it just for my ball tip pieces, but I'm going to use it for my needles that I'm going to be adding, uh, my thread on. You can tell Dubes really, he loves the fabric projects. Look at him. He is excited to be a part of this. He wants to lay down <laughs> and watch 
he decided to get all up in there. So I'm going to go ahead. It's because I took the seat, y'all. Watch. Here. Now you get your seat back. Watch, I'm going to get him back on his seat. Get back up there. There you go. See? He's happy now. <laughs> he wasn't happy that I took his spot to sit down. Okay, so I've got a nice orange thread already on here, but it's not very long. So I'm going to go ahead and get... Ooh, I need scissors. Oh, that's okay. i got scissors right there. I'm going to go ahead and grab some colors. Ooh, I've got another... Another one just sitting right there. Now these I'm going to have to split because my needles that I have have really, really small eyes on them. So I'm going to have to split my threads because right now these have about six individual threads on them. So I'm going to split them in half, three and three, and I'm just going to let them free hang and I'm going to slowly pull them apart. And so they're going to untwirl this way. And this is going to be give me a thinner but colorful thread. And I want to make sure I don't accidentally knot them up as I do it. So I'm going real slow. Oop, and then we got them done. Yes, yeah, so now I've got two separate threads that are triple threaded rather than six. So I've got a nice dark blue here. So I'm going to actually take this and try to get this threaded in my needle here. You know, I just, I wet the end a little bit and kind of flatten it with my teeth. And that allows me to thread it through the needle. You can buy these little assistants that help you kind of get the needle uh, threaded. I'm actually going to go ahead, since I have multiple needles, I'm going to prep multiple different colors of thread here because I want to make sure that I've got a nice colorful thing and so when you buy this embroidery thread it comes like this and it's got the little paper things on it keep them on there because there's always a string hanging out that's the one that you can pull and see how those not only do those little papers act as identification so when you want to go back and match the color you can get the same number that's on there. If you can see that, it's got a number on there. But they also help keep your thread semi-organized. That way it's not uh, going to get all tangled up with the others. So I'm going to do the same thing with this yellow that I did with the blue. I'm going to separate this out uh, three and three. You know, and I'm going to go real slow and I'm going to get this thread nice and separated. Now you see how that kind of buckled up on me. So I got to stop pulling it. I got to pull it nice and tight down again. And then I can start, I can start again with my twirling. Of course now I got them caught up in each other. I'm trying to show you all <laughs> how not to knot it up. I then showed you how to knot it up. Goodness. Gracious. All right, there we go. Things are fixed, kind of, almost. You gotta try to keep the threads away from each other. That's where my error was, is I let them kind of get too close to each other because that twirling, you know, so keep those arms away as we're getting that pull. You know, sometimes it's more complicated when I'm talking to you guys and trying to demonstrate at the same time as uh, actually doing. So that makes it kind of fun. All right, so, which is good for me, learning, you know, speaking through and paying attention at the same time. Just like Dubes is paying attention to the string work as well. So now I've got my yellow divided into two strings of three. And so I'm gonna also, get this one threaded on a needle. I've got a black one on here that I really don't need, so I'm going to get rid of that. And then I'm going to get my other needle threaded. So in talking about abstract, we just want to play around with some different embroidery uh, techniques. And we also want to play around with how we want to stack these buttons on top of each other. Because remember I said I've got a large amount of buttons here and buttons here. And usually what you can do at craft stores, etc., etc., you can actually 
find and buy these grab bags of colors of buttons and these allow you to kind of play around with, uh, you know, just play around with how you want to put them on your piece. We can do a nice silhouette of something, like a heart or a bird, or we could go just straight abstract. I think I'm going to play with abstract because I want to show you a couple different techniques real quick with this. And we don't want to go too far down the rabbit hole so that we can get something that's semi-completed for you too. And so I'm separating out my final color, which is my green string. And I'm going to make sure I get this on my needle as well. And so you can see just prepping your materials can take you a hot minute or two. But if we can take the time to prep in the beginning, then we can kind of freeform move through. Mm, we can move through the creative process a little bit easier because we've prepped, you know. I like to plan ahead enough so that we can live in the moment kind of thing. Yeah? Alright, so I've got three now different colors. We like to work in odd numbers because that's good for art. It's always good to have things always not perfect uh, unless you're working in symmetry and then of course you do want it to be perfect. So I'm going to play around with just laying some things down. You know, perhaps I do want this to be in a semi kind of shape. So perhaps on the back side I could go in you can also buy fabric markers that actually uh, can wash off after you've drawn on the fabric in order to create a templated design. I'm just going to do a simple little kind of heart to get us going and started. Now before I get going, I want to make sure that I knot the ends of my strings here. These are going to give a nice dead end and they're going to help me make sure uh, that they don't immediately pop through the framework of my fabric. Now I've got really big holes in my canvas like fabric that I'm working with right now so I'm probably going to have to actually tie my string together and I'm going to show you how I'm going to do that. So we're just going to come down and I'm going to pull you a lot closer so that you can really see uh, what it is that I'm doing. I'm going to pull some more of these buttons out. I don't think I want to mess with the white buttons terribly a lot, but I've got a lot of really great reddish color, etc., etc., etc. And I want to be sure that I'm pulling ones out to, uh, you know, it'll play around and give me some fun stuff. Ooh, I like these. I've got some really great old eagle ones. There are a lot of really great old ones in here. These are always fun to play with. And you know, what's nice about projects like this, if you decide, oh, you know, I'm not super into that as I thought I would be, then uh, that's okay. No worries. I like using the green. I think it'll give a really nice contrast. And now remember, I'm working abstract, which means that I don't have to necessarily sew the buttons on the way I would if I was actually sewing a button on. So I'm going to show you what I mean by that. I actually want to go ahead and tie a knot in here and make sure I've got a nice secure point for this. Because I'm going to use the same string to kind of get a couple different things done. Now since I've got my button in place, you know, now I can play around with some of the ways that I can grow and add some design work in here. So again, we're thinking about abstract and new ways to kind of play around and grab and create this really cool idea of a fun image. So I'm just going through you know, I'm being careful with my needle, and as I poke my needle around, you can see it kind of 
comes up. You see it right there? And then I can shift it over so I can get it into the exact location that I want it in, which is right underneath my button. See how that pulls it tight? And I can go in and start creating some really cool little embroidery designs just on the button itself in order to create this kind of fun fun idea of our sewing here. You can tell Dubes absolutely loves the sewing part. You can see I've got my phone up so that you guys can see what we're doing, but he is extremely interested in what it is that's going on. He wants to know where that thread's going, you guys. <laughs> so we're just going through and we're adding some fun pieces of detail in here. I'm going to start kind of trying to fly through this and show you how we're going to stack our buttons on top of each other as well. This is a fun ongoing project that you can keep at the side in order to play around and also create more little stacks of things. So I'm just going to go in. I want to work around in this area. So I think I'm going to go through and find some other stacks of hearts. I want to make sure that I'm being careful and I'm not I'm not making it too symmetrical. Remember, I want these to be abstract in how they're actually attached on here and how they're going to end up overlapping and creating those little lines. So you see I'm going to get this nice and pulled tight. That way we can get that secured on. And again, I'm kind of bouncing around because I'm using, I'm using my green thread, so I want to see this kind of all over my shape as I'm adding in all of my buttons. And so I'm just kind of playing with the red right now because I think that'll look pretty neat. But perhaps I want that to live someone over here. I wonder if that'll stick out too far. So you see I've got a different kind of button here. It's got a connection underneath it which means that it could overlap on one of these big ones quite nicely. And so I'm going to play around with getting that to happen right here. And so you see how we start creating a bit of an overlap. It doesn't make much sense now, but it will make more sense later. I'm actually going to pull my uh, needle up underneath my weave here. This will give me more stability on this button so that it doesn't fly around as I'm going back and forth. And so you see me continuing to work to build these buttons up so that we can create the scene. I want to cover up my fabric here eventually with all of my buttons. And so this one I think I'm going to play with more of a whimsical way of attaching it on here. And I'm going to get this button instead on the outside lanes here. And so what I can do is on the back side I should be able to see where those other kind of hole connection points are so that I can go in and I can get this one attached in much the same way. And then I look at the back. Because I want to root 
that needle back through the hole. You know, we can also take our embroidery thread and we can create some really cool little lines. Like I'm going to create a thin line here that's slightly curved. Because I want to create this idea of, I don't know, some bronze growing out. So then create this idea of, like, this leaf. Really loose. Again, we're playing with a bit of abstraction. And I'm playing with my embroidery thread, not just in attaching all of our buttons, but also in creating some little bits of sewing and images on the side. You know, you can turn this into more of a mixed media. You can use a piece of fabric that doesn't have such big of a hole pattern in it or a weave. And you can paint on fabric as well before you go to the actual sewing and embroidery part. So this is another way to take painting to another level in ways that uh, that uh, could be fun. I don't know. I don't want that underneath there. I want it to be green somewhere else. Let's see what else I got. Yeah, so I'm just playing around with all these, making sure I keep those on top of each other. And I'm looking at the back as I work on uh, kind of showcasing where all of those might go so that I know where I'm going to want those placed since I don't have that drawn on the front, oops, on the front side of my fabric. I lost my threading, but that's okay. We want to make sure that we get that thread nice and straight so that we can go in and get that back onto our needle. Oh, I just got one. Maybe I'll get that third. There we go. Sometimes when you pull it, guys, gals, Maybe you'll get two of the threads and you're missing one of them and see how it bunches up. But I did finally get all of them through the eye. I show you this because this is part of the learning, right? Not everybody knows how to work with thread. So again, I like to show you even the basics, etc. And so I'm going to take this and we're just going to get this nice and attached. Again, I'm just kind of working loosely. It's kind of like taking something that we usually only do when we have a purpose, etc. We need to actually, you know, make an image or we need to, you know, utilitarian darn a pair of pants. But this is taking it and having fun with it uh, in another way, which is uh, through the actual sewing process. I'm about done with this green thread. So I'm going to go ahead and tie it off. And so I'm just going to do that like this. I'm not going to tie too terribly tight, but I do want to make sure that I've got a nice solid connection point, which I do now that I rooted it through. And I'm just going to go in and create a nice little square knot using my fingernail in order to hold it taut so that I've got a nice finished kind of piece. So we've got a nice beginning on our sewing project, playing around with just, you know, the abstract laying down of buttons on fabric. This helps us practice important skills and helps us play around with loosening up a little on the way that we approach projects like this. You know, it's good to have mixed media and those tools in our toolbox. 
you know, it's important that we're playing around and always expanding on the things that we know how to do. And working with thread, etc., is something that's an important, not only life skill, but um, this is something that we can use um, in order to create art and elevate our craft uh, in mixed media, etc. And it's a great way to reuse things. Uh, you can do the same thing, you know, have, if you've ever been in thrift stores. My daughter, I don't know, teens love thrift stores too, and my daughter likes going in there and then um, they'll have these grab bags of all of the different like old necklaces, etc. And so she likes to go in and uh, grab one of those and break all of them apart and then you've got a bunch of really cool beads that you can play with too. So you can do this with a bunch of beads as well not just uh, buttons. So I'm playing around with all of my buttons that I've got here. Ooh, that one's a really fun one. Look at that. It's like a... I like that. Is there a way for me to fit that in here? Let's see. And I kind of hold up my project. You can kind of... Can you see it? I can see through it when I hold it up to the light so that I can see where I could maybe fit this, and it doesn't really fit anywhere except for there. So I think I'll use this one for another project because it's too big for me to use here, and I don't want to force it just because I kind of like it. So I want to make sure that I'm being careful and that I'm able to create this idea of a heart. So I need to make sure that I'm staying in line with my lines so that I can do that. And that is going to work right here. And so you see, I was able to kind of place this darker red here. I'm gonna get that one to live right up underneath. And I wanna figure out where I want that placement to go. And so again, I'm just kind of, since I have my hand drawn on my fabric, I'm going to get this guy, whoops, I'm going to get this guy nice and tight, and I'm going to hold it up against the light so that I can make sure that I'm within my boundary line. Again, we're working rudimentary because we are working with the lowest amount of materials that we might have, because again, I work on making this accessible to everyone else. Oh, look at that. So that allows me to get that seated in the exact position that I want, following in line with that boundary line of the heart that I kind of created. I didn't want it to go over that. So sometimes it gets a little complicated when we're seating these guys down and getting these kind of in where they should be. And again, that's us working in ways in order to follow a semi-pattern that we already created. And so I just went back and did it twice again. That way I made sure it was nice and secured in there so that we had a really good, solid connection. And so I am going to want to build another... I am going to want to build more of my outside edges here, and I think I'm gonna, you know, that one's kind of hard to sew. We might do one of these. So I'm gonna look at the back side of this and see. Where all that might fit. So I'm gonna go ahead and Get my needle in a nice little spot here. That way I can get that button seated because I want to get that nice section over here taken care of for the heart. And that'll flip that guy around and get that in there. I'm also going to make sure I fit a little pink baby in here. And I've got a teeny tiny one, so I'm going to make sure I've got this one to fill that empty space. Remember, we're thinking in layers, 
And now what I can do after I'm done with all of my buttons and adding them in, I'll be able to go through with some pockets of color with embroidery and create knot work, etc. so that we can continue to get all of these sewn in. Oh yeah, we've got some stuff happening, you guys. Very good. Okay, I'm gonna work on getting that one into its spot and location, which that would be the correct one that I wanted in, so I'm gonna hold that. That way I can use my needle and to kinda, it's kinda like fishing, I think, without uh, making sure that you end up hitting on your finger. You can wear a thimble, make sure you don't stick yourself. But I am going to hold this button down because I don't want it to squirrel around on me or move around. My grandma always called it squirreling. And so I'm just going to go in and make sure I've got that button in there nice and solidly. And so I'm really starting to build this up. This is really just looking like a cool little conglomerate. And remember, as we're working and creating these, we are indeed trying to create this great little section. And so I've got my button held. Again, it's kind of, you know, we're working with our basic rudimentary ways of sewing. So I'm going to pull my yellow thread through here. This one has a different connector in the back, which I like. This allows me to overlay this on top of the other buttons. So you see I'm strategically problem solving and I'm picking the ones. Oh, look at that. That flips around. And see, I'm starting to create this little curvature here that I'm going to want for the rest of my heart. That's some good stuff. And so... I need scissors so I can break this guy apart. And now I've got some different ones here that I'm going to go through. Make sure. Oops. I loosened that up a little bit. Make sure I'm seating these because this needs to be up underneath here. Make sure I'm holding on to that solidly so that it doesn't move around on me. And then I'm going to grab my needle here. And I'm coming from the back side. So I'm going to go through and do my bit of fishing. You know, and this is great mind muscle connection because you see that needle coming out by my thumb. But I've got to figure out and get it through the actual eye holes that exist there. And so you see that's where I just kind of push it through the fabric to try to make sure that I've got a solid connector there. Much easier when I'm looking at it on the front side because I can actually see where that hole is. And now that I've got it already mapped out, it's easier for me to see from the back side too. I'm just gonna go around this a couple times in order to get these holes kind of seated. I don't know, maybe we'll go through and create a little starburst pattern around this one. I kind of like that. We'll play around with that. That's fine with me. So wherever I've got it where it's visible, I'm just going to go through and kind of mimic what I had going on in some other buttons. And we're just going to play around with some decorative stitching and alternative ways of getting some design in here. Oh my goodness. And so I'm just kind of doing my little fishing part and you see how I'm just adding some more stitching in there and I'm really just doing basic stuff playing around with going around the button. Yeah, so that 
creates a fun little accent right there for our piece. And continuing to work on these and get these in here. What else have I got for variety? I'll be able to throw one of those in there, I think. So I'll be able to continue. I think I'm going to continue to focus on my outside edge here. So I want to make sure that I've got some good buttons there for that. And again, I'm holding it. I'm doing a bit of fishing so that I can find that correct hole for that correct placement of the button as I go through and secure that in. You'll see me work to get that secured in. Oops. So that my button won't shift and move on me. You see how I've got this really nice kind of design that's starting right here. Oops, we got a little shifted there. I don't know what happened. All right, there we go. Okay, so we've got a really nice kind of shape starting to happen. This is fun. And again, you can attract and work on this project in any way that you want to, in any kind of fashion. That's what I like about this kind of abstract project is there's really no rules, as there really aren't with any project that's abstract. I mean, you could really play around with this and do something like take a picture of someone's profile and blow it up, and then now you've got this cool outside edge for, say, someone's face, and you can fill it in with a variety of buttons, and now you've got a unique way to uh, record the beautiful face of someone you love, right? fun. Oh, look at that. That's starting to really come together. Neato. I know you don't maybe see it, but it's going to be super fun, you guys. I think. So we're just working on getting more shapes in here. Oops, I'm going to get this other side here. I kind of want to get more more going on there. So I'm going to hold this button right in this spot here and I'm going to bounce, whoops, I kind of shot it across the room. And I'm going to bounce this yellow over here. So I'm going to grab my yellow thread that I've got and I'm going to do a bit of my fishing. Remember this is just basic 101 stuff. We're just putting buttons playing around with color, making sure that we're keeping our thread taut. This is a great way to practice sewing and that mind-muscle connection needed for sewing. Oops, that's too far. I gotta find my hole here. There we go. And so these are good skills. This might be awkward for you, and that's okay. It's good to be awkward because that means you are learning new things. Oops, what happened? Ooh, see, I hooked it on the other button. I did forget. I've got this green string just kind of in my way back here, so I'm going to clean that up so it's not getting in the way of my rest of my sewing project. And so you see... Oh, this is growing and growing and I've got all three colors prepped and I'm kind of bouncing around everywhere and you know those colors will end up really looking neat um, because you'll have all these nice little different accents for all the different boys. I'm going to pull some more buttons out because maybe I don't have a huge variety of what, ooh there's a bright orange one, I like that, I dig that, I dig it I dig it. So I'm going to actually get that one right down here because I think, well, how far away is that? No, I don't want to do that. Let's get this one right here. I'm going to do my fishing. 
a bit. That way I can find my hole. Remember, I'm not the expert at sewing. I'm showing you some basics here in order to work on creating a project, a nice abstract project, um, using materials that maybe you haven't thought of using before. And using materials like this in a way that's artistic as well. These are things um, that are fun for us in order to elevate something as simple as maybe buttons that you otherwise would be like, well, that's boring because buttons, how are buttons exciting? Well, we can play around with them and create these really cool uh, kind of pseudo images and abstract uh, kind of stuff. Again, playing around with our embroidery in new ways helps us kind of start to design these. So you see how this is starting to kind of create this heart shape. And I've got little blocks here and perhaps those are too big to fit another button on, but I can always go in with my red thread, etc., in order to build on that. So remember, we're focusing on the building. The slow build of our shape. You know, working on getting our things in in a really nice cohesive way. So I'm going to take this button. I want this one to kind of slip under. Oops. I want this one to kind of slip underneath this other red one. So it's super important to me that this stays real tight here. Same thing on the back side. I'm going to make sure that it stays real tight so that I can go on the other side. Make sure that's locked in properly. That way I can continue to work on this nice shape that I've got going on. Again, I'm going to hold it while I do some of my fishing here in order to find my hole. I don't much use them. I don't like thimbles. Thimbles bother me. They get in the way. But some people like thimbles. So, I mean, to each your own. I'm just kind of getting these in here. And you see how the heart is starting to come across as a shape. Oh, am I still getting yellow? I want to probably put one more yellow in. And then we're going to We're going to shift over to our blue. So I've got this working right here. And again, fishing in order to find that needle. You see right there. Again, we're just working on basic, simple embroidery to play around with creating this image and playing around with abstraction using simple sewing materials. in order to create this nice abstraction that we've got going on here, yes? Alright, so I think I'm going to close this one off. I've got a really nice uh, string here that I can turn around and create a nice knot off of. So that is exactly what I'm going to do. Just working off that string and creating a nice little box knot out of there. Alright, a square knot. Alright, so we've got that nice and closed off. I'm going to trim that so I don't need that any longer. 
And really the last one that I've got is going to be my blue one here. And so I have a nice dark blue that I'm going to use for probably the rest of my buttons. We may not finish this and that's okay. I'm going to seat this guy here. Make sure I don't have any knots in my string. Now this one's a bright vibrant blue so it's going to pop real neat. This will create some nice contrast I think against some of the other colors. You know, I kind of stayed monochromatic on this. You don't have to. If you've got a wide array of buttons, you can really play around with the entire spectrum and rainbow of them in uh, designing and creating your piece. You know, you can certainly make it a lot more complicated um, than I did in order to, uh, whoops, I don't want to go from the top. I want to go from the bottom up, you guys. So I'm going to pull my string tight. And I'm going to make sure, make sure that I've got, ooh, got some interesting songs coming on. All right, make sure I've got my button in there. Lo-fi hip-hop gets weird sometimes, I guess. And I'm going to get the rest of my button in there, see how I've got that. And you know, like this long skinny heart starting to kind of show up as a shape. So I'm going to go fishing a bit so that I can get the other hole of my piece through here. And then I want to get the bottom side. So I can get that nice square look through there. And so we're just going through, trying to get all the rest of these buttons in. I'm going to get one down at the bottom, because I think that would be wonderful. And that'll help really seat the look for this, I think. Again, I'm fishing, trying to find those holes at work. So that we can get this design in. You see how that's starting to come together? A really fun way to play around again with sewing, playing around and elevating everyday materials that perhaps otherwise you'd be like, well, that's not that exciting. But um, they, however, can really add a lot um, into our pieces, and they can add a lot into our projects. Mixed media, whether you think it's something that you want to do or learn or incorporate in your art or not, uh, mixed media can always add a lot of intrinsic value um, to the things that you do because, you know, that diversity and in, in texture that results invariably when you do mix the medias is what can add a really cool interest. There's a fine line between crafts and art, I think. Perhaps that's just me. Um, but I think, uh, I'm going to do this again because I want it to be nice and tight. So it's kind of loose right now, you see, but I'm going to tighten that up because I've got such a loose weave on my fabric here, this canvas, that I really want to make sure I've got it kind of doubled up so it's nice and tight. Oh yeah, that's great. So I've got a nice little eagle now in my heart. You see how that's starting to come together? Like, again, awkward teenage phase. I'm telling y'all, it's real. It looked awkward, and you're probably like, what is Amber doing? She doesn't even know what she's doing. Well, you know, I like to surprise people a lot. It's one of my my favorites, actually. And, uh, you know, it's good to be a quick learner, and it's good to be able to 
teach out these things. These are things that I thought would be, you know, a little hard to teach out. And I'm always trying to, again, think of ways to take these everyday materials that allow all of us to be a bit of an artist. And if I could, don't have a class that somebody can do today, there'll be something in the archive that has some sort of material that somebody has at home so that you can indeed make things. Remember again, you can play with the ways that you actually attach these guys on there. You can work with the different ways that you embroider in between and do the sewing, etc. So you see I have the beginning of my piece. You know, you can go in right on the back and put names in, follow your pencil lines. And you can get all kinds of, oh, you can get all kinds of stuff in your embroidery projects, effectively doing line work, but doing it with string and kind of uh, sewing all that stuff on. Make sure you're taking a look at our archived uh, videos for all the rest of our Art Co. afternoon classes. I host classes almost every day of the week except for Sundays. Make sure you look at our schedule. We have something new in a different category every day of the week. Today was Wacky Wednesday, so we were playing with a new material. Tomorrow is Throwback Thursday, so we will be doing classes for the smaller and younger of our Art Co. audience, more elementary style projects, a great way to get reconnected with one's youth or create art with somebody who is young in your house as well. I got crazy hair going on. I was doing some working out earlier. You're doing some yoga. It's good stuff. Anyway, make sure that you're stretching your creative uh, muscles. Make sure you're also looking at our live streams, both art and music. Make sure you take a look at our donation links. Help support all the things that we do in order to support community. We've got merchandise for sale. We've got art for sale. All done by local DFW artists. Make sure you're taking a look at those as well. If you haven't bought any local original art in a bit, make sure you take a look at our virtual galleries. We've got our backyard opening soon. And we are excited about getting some art moving into your hands. So make sure you're taking a look at all that too. As always, we appreciate you. We are dedicated to the native and creative. And I will see you next time.